Hello, and welcome to Art Minutes. I'm Carrie Elkins, Museum Specialist at the Appleton Museum of Art, and this is Camino Hacia la Fe, or Path to Faith, by Francisco Gordillo Arredondo. This charcoal drawing spans 35 separate pieces of cardstock paper. The seven columns of five tiles measure 250 centimeters by 490 centimeters, or about 8 by 16 feet, one of the largest works in the Appleton Museum's collection. It features several scenes related to the practice of and initiation into Santeria, an Afro-Cuban religion, including divination, animal sacrifice, and worship of saint-like gods called Orisha. Gordillo was raised in the traditions of Santeria, and eventually he became a priest. Because this artwork is so intrinsically connected to Gordillo's Congolese ancestry and religious beliefs, it's important to know more about the religion of Santeria. Santeria originates from the Yoruba culture in the southwestern area of Nigeria. The traditions of the Yoruba, along with other cultures and religions of Africa, arrived in Cuba through slavery and survived by passing the traditions down to each generation through storytelling. Since Spanish is the dominant language and culture in Cuba, there are many similarities to Catholicism. The Orisha are akin to Catholic saints and likewise have statues and altars created to honor them. Each Orisha has specific colors and numbers attributed to them, and there is even a specific Orisha that protects a person, similar to a guardian angel. Path to Faith is Gordillo's artistic rendering of his religious path. The scenes we see depicted are his initiation into Santeria and its practices. This three-day-long process of Mano de Arula, or Hand of Arula, referred to as Awafaka for men, includes making offerings to gain the blessings of ancestral spirits called Egun, receiving his guardian Orisha, and being sworn in on a pole mount. Gordillo learned to draw and paint at an early age from his father, who was a self-taught artist. He then took workshops and painted in open-air urban landscapes in his free time, eventually graduating in 1988 from the renowned Academia Nacional de Bellas Artes San Alejandro in Havana. Gordillo has long been committed to his family and their African ancestry. His family are descended from the Congo and settled in the town of Rodrigo in the Cuban province of Villa Clara. While he practices Santeria, he is also influenced by various African-derived traditions in his family, including those of the Congo that have been passed down. Gordillo said, I found it interesting to express my feelings in respect for their culture and philosophy of life, and for their courage of not losing it despite their difficult life as slaves. Nowadays, the old are no longer here, and the young people who have stayed don't show any interest in maintaining this tradition. I hope my work serve so that it doesn't die. Gordillo also cites Afro-Cuban painters like Wifredo Lam, who is also represented in the Appleton Museum's collection, as his inspiration. He even dedicated some of his work to Lam in homage. Gordillo's work has a surreal nature, similar to Lam's work. Surrealism of the 1920s to 1940s was characterized by exploring the limits of reality with subconscious dreams to create the uncanny and unexpected in order to liberate the mind. Gordillo previously wrote, In the composition you can see varieties of shapes and elements that have other configurations within them. I use concrete and specific forms within realities that are being made up of specific forms that coexist and make said realities coexist. What's also interesting in this work is the use of positive and negative space. Positive space refers to the subject or main areas of interest in an artwork, whereas negative space is the area around or between the subject, sometimes creating silhouettes. Gordillo once wrote, the space varied according to the reason I expressed. I use all the space, making it part of the work, to give the composition greater interest and enrichment. Something similar happens in rituals and ceremonies, where the smallest detail is of enormous importance. The contrast allows them to create a visual, spiritual space, like we see here with the overlapping oval-like shape. It also highlights some of the details that are significant to Santeria practice. Throughout the work, we see repeated imagery of cowrie shells, arrows, X-shaped and O-shaped symbols, and other circles. These all have meaning related to Santeria. Gordillo said, Using African elements and symbols, I present a whole story and place it on a mountain, a sacred place in this culture. 
The cowrie shells are often used for divination as the means of communication. The arrows represent the paths of energy, which can be positive or negative, denoted by X's or O's. Other circles symbolize the world and four cardinal points. There are also two scenes that bookend the drawing, both featuring trees. When we asked about their significance, Gordillo said, the trees are of great importance in the African tradition and to initiate a devotee. You have to count on them and their spirituality, calling their energies, to nature in general. They realize what is going to be done and who will be born in the world of Orishas, and we ask for your authority through libations and offerings. These figures represent those ancestral energies and spirits that seek for their new home within the trees. When performing divination in Santeria, priests or priestesses use a tray called an ifa. Here is an example of one of those divination trays that we also have in the Appleton Museum's collection. This is an opon ifa from the Yoruba in the Republic of Benin, which borders Nigeria. The tray depicted in Gordillo's work is very similar. They both have an incised decorative rim with faces of Orisha. Gordillo's image of the divination tray is mirrored in the background with a handprint in the middle, once again making use of positive and negative space. When asked what message he wants to convey, Gordillo said, I want the viewer to feel as if they can identify with this culture that sees the cultural and spiritual value it possesses. Paradise, for those who don't know the cult of the Orishas, will be able to observe one tradition that endures and lives outside of Africa with its religious values, keeping very in mind who we are, where we come from, where we're going. For those who are familiar, to see the discipline and the obedience that is maintained from yesteryear, the poetry of Africa through a descendant. Also, to remain as a legacy for new generations to get to know the steps to follow and get started in having an alignment with their destiny. Thank you for listening. We look forward to sharing more about our collection with you in the next Art Minutes. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.